Well, good morning, um, First Puritan Calvary. Um, thank you all for um, joining in with us on this morning for our Sunday school lesson. Um, I believe we have a really good lesson on today. Today is Sunday, May 3rd, um, year 2020. Um, I pray that you are um, continually um, staying safe, that you are staying healthy, um, and that God is continually keeping you during these turbulent times that we are living in. Um, um, one of the things I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, is that um, it's important that we continue to adhere to um, those guidelines. Um, even um, if you are, um, you know, you know, getting impatient, getting worried, um, it's very important that we listen um, to those guidelines. Um, they're outlined to help us, but most of all, they're outlined um, to give us the best chance at returning to a sense of normalcy. Um, so let's be smart, um, let's be wise, um, and let's continue to adhere to those guidelines, um, praying and hoping that um, God will bless us um, to, to, to return to um, a sense of normalcy um, after all of this. I'm believing that God can still give us glory. Um, even after all of this. So um, I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you. I miss you all. Um, haven't been able to see you all. Um, even around town, I've been able to run into you, some some of you. Um, but it's still not the same um, as fellowshipping um, as one body of believers. So um, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, soon we'll be able to return to fellowship and I'll be able to see your face in the place. Amen. Uh, we're going to go open with a word of prayer, and then we're going to get right into the lesson. Eternal Father, we come now, God, um, this morning to say thank you. We thank you that you are still God, even in times such as this. And now, God, we ask that as we prepare to uh, study your word, as we prepare um, for Sunday school, we ask that you would um, illuminate our minds, um, enlighten our hearts, God, that we would hear from you and see what it is that you are saying to your people even in a time such as this. Um, touch me in your vessel, take me out of self, hide me behind the cross, and nothing will come forth but you and you alone. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, so, so, like I said, we're going to um, open up uh, uh, our lesson text for today. Um, it's found in Jeremiah chapter number 23, verses 1 through 8. Um, I believe this is a very timely um, message. This is a very timely lesson, rather, um, for us to consider on this morning. Um, so um, we we are um, we're going to be studying um, Jeremiah chapter number twenty three, verses one through eight, um, with our golden text being um, verse five in that in that um, passage of scripture. Um, as we read our introduction, it says, "When the politician today." decides to run for a high government or government office such as president senator or con uh, or congressman he is typically asked why he wants the job um, various goals and aims for the country and localities um, uh, are then cited um, but invariably the stated purpose includes the idea of serving the people. So today we're going to study the central idea of servant leadership. Um, I believe it's important that we understand um, the the difference between just a leader and um, a servant leader, um, because there's a difference. Um, so 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 we're going to talk about servant leadership um, today um, and the importance of recognizing the difference between just being the leader. And being a servant leader, um, I believe that God calls us as His people. Um, whether you are in a government position, whether you are in um, um, a religious position of leadership, or whether you are just merely in, um, you know, any position of leadership, I believe that if you are a true born child of God, it's important to be um, a, a, a servant leader over just merely a leader. Um, so, 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 but invariably, the stated purpose. Um, of anybody's um, platform for leadership um, includes the idea of serving the people. The sentiment uh, may be widely taken as mere lip service. 
Um, but the candidate who neglects to express it will find his campaign in big trouble. Um, why, uh, why is the idea of a leader who serves so ingrained in our politics? Um, it, it, it has not been so throughout much of the world history. In many regions and eras, leaders were and still are simply seen as those who ran things, the bosses who gave orders and benefited from their power. My God. Uh, they were at the top and everybody else was at the on the bottom. The most credible answer is that the idea of servant leadership has come to us from the Bible. Um, both the Old and New Testament present a perspective on leadership and power that runs counter to worldly norms. So that's what that, that's what we really want to touch on today. Um, um, going against the worldly norm for leadership and examining God's uh, blueprint. Um, God's blueprint and what God has to say about leadership. Um, it has influenced our culture even um, if it has never been consistently followed or acknowledged. We're going to examine two points as we look at our lesson outline on today. Um, verses 1 through 4 of this 23rd chapter, Jeremiah, you're going to, um, we're going to examine the need for pastoral care. The need for pastoral care. I believe that there's a great need um, for you to have a leader during this time. Um, I, I believe that there's a great need, especially in the time that we're living in, that you have a pastor, that you have a strong leader, a strong servant leader. Um, and then um, um, verses 5 through 8, we're going to learn about the coming shepherd or the coming king. Um, and we all know who that is. Um, so as we look at the need for pastoral care, um, I won't read verses 1 through 4. Um, but for your consideration, um, you know, I, I would ask that you would read them. Um, and, and, and I really want to uh, point out uh, verses 1, and then um, I want to point out verse 4. Verse 1 says, Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Woe. He says, Woe unto them. And then verse number 4, he says, And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, shall they be lacking, said the Lord. So um, in verses 1 through 4, as we look at verses 1 and 4, we see two central ideas that God really wants us to know about servant leadership. First of all, he gives a warning about, uh, he gives us a warning concerning the dangers of I'm neglecting your role as a pastor or your role as a leader. Um, and he wants, he wants the prophet Jeremiah to let us know that we've got to be careful as to what we do um, or be careful concerning the things that we are doing that will potentially scatter the God's people. Um, pastoring um, brings uh, uh, comes with a great responsibility. Any position of leadership, not just pastoring, but any position of leadership comes with a great responsibility because what you are doing is you are taking on your role, especially as a pastor, as an under shepherd, meaning you are taking a group of people that God has put under your tutelage and saying, I'm going to be willing to lead, but also willing to serve you. And it is your responsibility as that leader to, to, to ensure that you're not doing anything that would either, like he said, destroy the sheep, but also not scatter them. And, and, and I believe that's important for us. And then he, but he also says, he gives us good news. Um, he gives the warning, but he says, look, if, if the man of God um, is truly called by me, um, he says that uh, uh, I will set up shepherds over them over my people who shall feed them. And that's the importance. He says that, the, that there's a need for pastoral care, uh, uh, in the world, especially in this world, because pastors feed us. Amen. Pastors feed us the word of God. I'm reminded of what Jesus said when he was tempted um, in the wilderness by the devil. He told he had to tell them. He said, yeah, you you know the word, Satan. You you trying to tempt me and tempt me to do these different things. He said, uh, uh, you trying to tempt me to make food for myself. He said, well, look, check it out. Um, man shall not live by bread and bread alone, 
but also by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. Right now we're living in turbulent times, Pilgrim Calvary. Right now we're living through, we're living in some perilous and dangerous times, some times filled with uncertainty. If my grandmother was here, she would say times that are filled with swift transition. But he said that, 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 that yes, they're talking about there's going to be a food shortage. Yes, they're talking about all these different things that might happen. But he says, look, it's important that you eat of the word. But the only way you can eat of it is if you are being fed. It. Amen. So, so, so he says there's a need for pastoral care because pastors feed us. He says feed us, but but he the uh, pastors also provide us with a sense of security because they, as under shepherds, it is their job to guard the flock. It's their job to 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 be watchmen for our souls. So he says, um, uh, uh, not only will they feed you, but they'll 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 be there for you so that you will fear no more and that you will be not dismayed. Amen. And neither shall you be lacking, said the Lord. Um, this portion of Jeremiah was written um, as as we get some background on the text. Um, sometime during the reign of Zedekiah, um, the last king of Judah before Jerusalem was overrun by the Babylonians. Um, two um, deportations of Jew of Jewish captives to Babylon um, ha uh, had already taken place under the king. Um, Jeho, uh, I'm sorry, Jehoiakim, um, under Jeho, uh, Jeho, I'm sorry, Jeho, uh, Jehoiakim, um, who ruled Judah for three months, Nebuchadnezzar, um, the, de uh, deposed him and installed Jehoiakim's uncle, uh, Madani, um, on the throne as the puppet king. So let's keep let's let, let's I, I, if you have a highlight or a, a, a pen underline that word uh, those two words puppet king because those are important to understand in our lesson on today uh, renaming Zedekiah in the process unlike the, the uh, unlike his two predecessors uh, Zedekiah had a degree of respect for Jeremiah and sometimes sought his advice so uh, Zedekiah was actually smart because he sought spiritual wisdom. And it's important that as pa I'm sorry, excuse me, as pastors and as leaders that we are seeking spiritual wisdom. Because as we get spiritual wisdom, as we obtain um knowledge and understanding that 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 is of sound doctrine, that is of sound wisdom, we are able to effectively lead God's people. Um, so, 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 so Zedekiah, unlike his two predecessors, he had a degree of respect. He also, he, uh, uh, uh took time to seek spiritual wisdom. Um, um, but at other times, uh, however, however, at other times he listened to Jeremiah's enemies and had, in, uh, had, uh, and had him in prison. He had Jeremiah in prison. So, so, um, uh, it's important to understand this as well. Um, Zedekiah is weak and, uh, uh, weak character ultimately led to Judah's destruction when he rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar by siding with those who opposed the Lord's will, which had been made known through Jeremiah. So, so he had an uh, he had a knowledge of God's will. However, um, he was so wishy washy, he was so flip floppy that yes, he did take time um, to, 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 to seek spiritual wisdom, but ultimately um, he, 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 he was led into destruction because he also sided with Jeremiah's enemies. And because he sided with Jeremiah's uh, enemies, what he did was he went against God's will for his position in leadership. And brothers and sisters, that's why God said he, at the beginning, he said, war unto the pastors who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, said the Lord. Because what he's saying is, if you are not careful, you will not only lead yourself, but you will lead your people into destruction. And that's why I said it is very careful that you are mindful, brothers and sisters, during these times who you are following. It is very um, important. It is of the most, uh, the most uh, uh, importance that you are mindful of who you're listening to, who you are allowing to, to pour into your life during these times, because if you are not careful, you will allow the wrong word. You will allow the wrong doctrine. You will allow the wrong leadership to lead you in to destruction.
My, my, my. And that brings us to our first point in verses one through two. He talks about negligent shepherds, the danger of negligent shepherds. This section begins with a direct word from the Lord against the pastors, which destroy and scatter the sheep of his pasture. The, the reference to sheep, uh, the, the reference to, to sheep and the pasture tells us that the term pastors is speaking of shepherds, a meaning that is still figurative, figuratively um, used to refer to pastors today. But who were the shepherds that aroused the Lord's indignation? Um, in the ancient Near East, shepherd was a common designation for a king, for the, the leader, the head honcho. When David speaks of the Lord as his shepherd in Psalm 23 and 1, he uh, was acknowledging him as king. One who looked after his subjects with the care and expertise of a strong but gentle shepherd. David himself had uh, been a king, literally. He had literally been a king. Um, but he continued the tradition of shepherd leadership. If you know anything about David, David, David was a shepherd boy. When, 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 when uh, a king was sought and, uh, 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 uh he was found. In the in the pasture, he was found out in the fields tending to. The, he was uh, doing his job as a shepherd. But one of the things that you find about David all throughout the Word of God, uh, anything that you read about David, you'll find that he was always he always assumed his role as not only a king, but he incorporated his role, uh, his previous role as shepherd in the way that he led. And that's why it's important for us as leaders, not just as pastors, but in any position of leadership, whether you're a deacon, whether you're a deaconess, whether you are head of your ministry, whether you are the pastor, where you are in a position of government leadership, in a position of community leadership, it is important, is of the utmost relevance that we understand the importance of servant or not only servant, but shepherd leadership. Amen. So, 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 so David, David always assumed this role as, as a shepherd leader, um, when he became king, um, this is perhaps most clearly seen in Ezekiel chapter 37 and 24, the promise of a new David. And they, uh, when he says, and David, my servant shall be king over them and they shall have one shepherd in Israel. However, the idea of shepherding was extended beyond the monarch of the leader. Spiritual leaders, or uh, priests rather, Levites um, and prophets are in the view here, as well as civil leaders. The spiritual leaders especially were changed with the responsibility of leadership, uh, I'm sorry, of leading the people in on the right paths and keeping them safe spiritually and encouraging unity. So let's write those down. Let's highlight those that, that, that it's important. The importance of, uh, uh, of, of a shepherd and the importance of a leader is that a, a leader, spiritual leaders especially, are charged with a great responsibility that they must first, one, lead God's people into the right paths. Got to be careful now because some people will lead you but not lead you in the right path. Uh, uh, it's important that your leader is leading you in the right path, that they are keeping you safe spiritually during this time, bro, during these times, brothers and sisters. Yes, we must practice um, social distancing um, in, in hopes of protecting ourselves and being protected physically. Um, and, and, but that's why I said that during this time as ministers, as pastors, as leaders, we are on the front lines, too. Because doctors and, and, and scientists and nurses, their job is to keep you safe during these times physically. But the pastor's job, the, the, the minister's job, the, the, the preacher's job, the leader's job, your spiritual leader's job is to keep you safe spiritually. Because yes, COVID-19 might affect your body physically. It can sicken you physically. But there's another sickness out there called sin that affects you spiritually. Oh, my God. So, so it's important that you have a leader that, that, that's committed to keeping you safe spiritually. And then also um, they must encourage unity. Instead of faithfully fulfilling their duties, Judah's leaders were destroying and scattering the flock. This is what we did. We get into negligent leadership. They, 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 they destroy and scatter God's flock. Um, they were doing the work of the people's enemies, the wolves, the lions, and the robbers, rather than protecting against those same enemies. What an indictment, my God. 
Under the under their lack of care, people were straying into the worst forms of idolatry and disobedience, and thus were defenseless against the enemy's attacks. It's important, brothers and sisters, that as leaders, we are leading you in the right paths because if we are not careful, um, I don't know if you all remember during revival, I said this um, in one of my messages. Um, uh, 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 I, I believe it was um, when we talked about um, ugly religion at a beautiful church. I said that it's important that um, we we as leaders have to ensure that the church um, is not allowing the world to have a bigger impact on the church than the church is having on the world. And if we are not careful, we will allow the world to creep into the church. So it is our responsibility as leaders to feed you and to nurture you and lead you into, into the path of righteousness. So that you are able to withstand the, the, the works and the tricks of the enemy. That they were not careful. The leaders during this time that we are um, reading about today, that we are studying today, were not uh, fulfilling their responsibility. And as such, they led their people into a sinful state that ultimately led to their demise. So it's, it's, it's very important. In Jeremiah 23 and 2, the law repeats his accusation that Judah's leaders have scattered and driven off his flock. He then uses the interesting play on the words, the shepherds have not visited the people. Therefore, he would, uh, he would visit their evil on them. He, uh, he, 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 he can maintain the, world, the word play um, in explaining that as they fail to bestow feeding um, and care of, uh, on their changes, so he would bestow judgment and punishment on them. So God will always deal with negligent leadership accordingly. Let's keep that in mind. God will always deal with negligent leadership accordingly. That's why it's not our job to, especially in the church, brothers and sisters, it's not our job um, to, 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 to do so much or, or, or find ourselves trying to do so much about negligent leadership. There's only so much we can do about negligent leadership. There's only so much that we can call out. Ultimately, we have to come to understand that some things are ultimately between the, that leader and God. I understand that we, 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 we don't agree with how things are going um, with, with our government leaders. Um, we, we don't, uh, we don't, we don't like the way our president operates. We don't like, some of us don't even, some, some people don't even like the way the governor operates, even, uh, you know, even though they, they, they may do their best. Um, however, and, uh, sometimes they may not do their best, but regardless of the circumstances, brothers and sisters, I've come to the understanding that yes, I may not get along with, uh, uh, uh President Trump's ideas. I may not always agree with the governor's mandates and the governor's stance on certain issues. However, I have the understanding of what, uh, the, what, the, what the prophet Isaiah said when he said that the government is on his shoulders, on Jesus' shoulders. And I, I've also come to the understanding that God would deal with people accordingly much better than I can. So he's, he lets us know that uh, 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 he will deal with negligent shepherds. So as we now we're going to get into new shepherds in Jeremiah 23 and, and uh, verses three and four. He says the Lord um, had more than just words for a con uh, of condemnation for the irresponsible shepherd. Um, he followed immediately with a promise to personally gather the remnant of the flock from all the countries to which he had driven them in judgment. He would bring them back to their um, folds. Places where they had been pro, uh, protected. He would make them prosperous and increase their numbers. Um, in place of um, the delinquent leaders uh, who had failed his people, God would raise up new shepherds. The same Hebrew word rendered for pastors in verse 1 is used here. These would be faithful leaders who could, could care for or feed God's flock so that they would no longer have reason to fear or distress. Moreover, none would go missing 
all be lost. And be not dismayed, brothers and sisters, because God has a way of restoring his people. He has a way of saying, yes, I understand that you've went through a rough patch in leadership. Yes, I understand that you've dealt with um, 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 some negligence in, in shepherds and leaders. However, be not dismayed because after prayer, after consideration, after guidance from the Lord, I will give you a new shepherd that will not only feed you, but it, he will be one who is after my own heart. Amen. Um, so then we're going to go down to our second point now. Our second point um, being uh, verses five through eight, the coming shepherd or the coming king. God gives us a promise that he would deal with the negligent shepherds. But then after he deals with negligent shepherds, he gives us a promise that he will restore us. He will give us um, a new shepherd. He will give us a new leader, one who will feed you, one who will guide you and lead you in the path that you need to go. But now he gives us the coming shepherd or the coming king. Um, verses 5 3, he says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. We know who he's talking about. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And uh, and this is the name whereby he shall be called um, the, the, the Lord, our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that they shall no more say the Lord liveth, which, uh, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up uh, and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. Um, so first of all, he gives us one. Um, he's talking about uh, one who will bring justice and righteousness in verses five and six. In these verses, the Lord expands on his promise of raising up a new, uh, a new faithful shepherds and speaks of a future time when the problem of irresponsible leadership, here it is, of irresponsible leadership will be completely remedied. My God. Uh, the, the, the phrase, the days come, looks ahead to the end times, to the end times, uh, when a vast number of prophecies will be fulfilled. Um, um, the, 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 the commentator uh, notes that it is a, 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 a messianic formula. And is used 15 times in Jeremiah. Uh, the faithful shepherds God would uh, raise up will not just his final answer. So here it is, brothers and sisters. If we don't find comfort in the fact that God will give us new um, and competent leaders in the form of man. He gives us a, 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 a confidence that one day we will be given a, a, a leader that, that is perfect. That is upright, one who cannot fail, one who will not fail. Amen. Uh, 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 he says, he says, he says, uh, 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 rabbinical uh, interpreter, uh, uh, rabbinical interpreters tend to interpret the term in a collective sense. Um, that term, what is meant by the word branch, by that term branch. Um, Isaiah, um, in Isaiah 60 and 1 provides an example of branch being used with this uh, with this meaning, uh, uh, and it is possible to see it in Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 2. But in other occurrences, in the prophets um, are clearly speaking of a single individual. Um, when he says, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. That's in Zechariah 3 and 8. Behold the man whose name is the branch. Um, in verses 6 and 2 of Zechariah. A later, I'm, I'm sorry, in chapter 6, verse 12 um, of Zechariah, um, a later reference in Jeremiah clinches the identification. God will cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. My God. Only one person can fulfill these conditions, and that is the Messiah. So one day, brothers and sisters, we look forward to the day that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will come, and we will be able to see him as our new shepherd and our new king. Amen? And now we deal with a new era of peace. So with the new shepherd will come a new era of peace, that all these things going to stop, that all these things have got to go away. 
uh, uh, COVID-19, a uh, uh, recession, uh, uh, unemployment, all these things have got to go away because we will exist. We will live in the new era of peace that comes with our new shepherd, our new king. In verse 7 to 8, he says, he talks about the future restoration of God's people under the coming messianic king, um, uh, uh, which will exceed anything they have ever known. That this is a peace. You know that peace that the Bible talks about, a peace that surpasses all of us. This is a peace that we will never that we've never seen before. A peace that we won't be able to wrap our minds around, that, that will be beyond our normal conception because of the fact that is a peace that we've never seen before. The Lord makes this clear um, with a dramatic comparison. People will no longer talk about how God brought his people out of Egypt, but they will instead focus on on how he brought them out of the north and from all of the countries to which they had been scattered. My God. Uh, 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 it, it is such a dramatic contrast that Jeremiah repeats it here after saying first uh, recorded in chapter, uh, in chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. Uh, which was the promise fulfilled at the uh, 536 BC in the various returns of Israelites from Babylon um, and other regions unto Cyrus and later rulers. Some commentators affirm that it was uh, that this that it was seeing in those, these verses an outline of nearly 1,000 years of Israelite history from Exodus um, in for, uh, 1445 BC to the exile in 586 BC and then to return in 536 B.C. But the picture we got in Ezra and in Nehemiah makes abundantly clear that the returns in that era never lived up to the grand promises made here and in other passages. We think in particular of the other dedication of the new temple, uh, 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 those who were old enough to remember Solomon's temple wept um, at the diminished size um, uh, uh, of the restored building. Moreover, through the through uh, the post the post um, exilic period, the, the the people remained subject uh, to the authority of foreign kings. By contrast, the deliverance promise in these verses will far surpass, will be far greater, even the mighty deliverance from Egypt, or even greater than the Exodus. The Exodus will pale into significance in the comparison with the significance, uh, 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 with the future in gathering of the nation from the worldwide dispersion. Brothers and sisters, the restoration of God, the restoration that he will give to his church and to his people after these turbulent times. Pilgrim Carey, I know even during this time personally, uh, outside of um, COVID-19, you are personally in the rough patch. But can I tell you that the glory that's coming, the restoration that's coming, the, 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 the revival that's coming to your ministry will, far, will be far greater than anything you've ever seen before. Amen. Let's close with a word of prayer. God, God, we thank you on today. We praise you once again for your word. We pray that your word will fall on good ground, that you would help us to take your word, make it a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, that we would take it and hide it into our hearts, that we would not sin against you. We pray, God, that you will continue to keep us. I pray that you will bless your people as, as they prepare to go into your cyber sanctuary on today, that they, as they prepare to go and hear a word from you, God. Bless the man of God that will deliver the word on today, that it will be a man of word from all high, that would encourage our hearts, that would help us to make it during these times. And when it's all over, God, we'll be ever so careful to give you the praise, to give you all the glory and all the honors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, First Pilgrim Calvary. I, I can't wait to see you once again. I'm praying your peace. I'm praying your protection during these times. Bless you.